Sport Night Amplified with Amdilad, powered by SABC Sport, exclusive to Metro FM. Game over. Well, as, as the league, I'm sure the club will share um, uh, whatever they glean out of any investigation that they will go into. But remember that uh, is issues of that nature are medical and and uh, has to be a high level of confidentiality perhaps even uh, the club may not receive the post-mortem report from the family if the family so decides so at this point in time we're focusing on uh, uh, the family being given space to grieve being given space to find out answers uh, via any post-mortem that uh, if they, they may undertake. And it remains their prerogative whether or not to share the results thereof. General Manager of the DSTV Premiership of the PSL there, Ace Ngobu Andile, speaking about uh, you know uh, the, the sad, sad and untimely passing of Spaman Dola, saying that it is not up to the club to release the post-mortem or speak um, on behalf of, but it is the family that will then come to us and uh, tell us the post-mortem if they so decide, but it rests with Umdeni Wagamdola. Once again, I mean, we continue to... Mam Kiza was here on the day that that broke as well. She shared her heartfelt condolences as well to say, you know, she's been in very close shoes to that and she understands the pain. So as a football fraternity, a sport fraternity, we continue to pour our hearts out to Umdeni Wagamdola after the passing, of course, of Uspamanda. Thank you so much to Est Ngobo there for coming out. And uh, when we spoke to him, we did ask, are we going to be seeing more from the DSTV Premiership? Are we going to be seeing more from the general manager? Are we going to be hearing them a lot more? And this is a, a very good start to that. So we are wait to hear if the family will be doing so. But uh, any information regarding Muspa um, Madlam Dolo and uh, funeral arrangements, if uh, there is going to be some sort of fan celebration as well, we'll let you know right here on the show. It's exactly nine after the hour six. Welcome to it. It's Post that Amplified with Andy. I am Andy Lengube. If you're live, we're there. Catch us out on Twitter. Catch us out as well uh, on uh, Facebook. Soon it will be Instagram and our YouTube channel at SABC Sports. Just keep following and watch the visuals. Today they're going to be worthwhile because the person whom we have in studio has gone all out. All out. I'll tell you about it in just a bit. Right now, though, let's reflect a little bit on yesterday. And I can't wait uh, for tomorrow because tomorrow it's uh, Podcast Fridays. And Nadim, as well as Pro Pilano, are going to be here. When we're speaking about Dondol Stars, who've uh, done it again after beating Super Sports United last night, they went and got into the quarterfinals of the NetBank Cup, beating Amazulu. Penalties is where it went down. One missed penalty, and they made sure that they capitalized on that. They were like the senior statesmen out there when they took those penalties. They made sure. One missed penalty from Amazulu, and they capitalized. They go through to the quarterfinals. And just like that, Usutu is out. So, yeah, it's all happening out there, isn't it? Today, though, on the show, a throwback Thursday. It's a throwback like no other. There's a couple of stories that I can't wait to hear from this man, including the first encounter he ever had when he went onto a horse. Why am I talking horses? Because sitting in front of me is Inos Musoto Mafukate, known worldwide as the king of the horses. It might be a normal thing nowadays to see black people on horses, it still startles some, but it's not against the law. This man fell in love with horses at a time when he couldn't afford one, number one. Number two, he was supposed to be nowhere near them. But his love for horses took him as far as the Queendom of England, where he can proudly tell you that he's had interactions with the Queen. He sits across from me now, dressed in his best it's going to be an amazing story. Trust me, we tell South African stories that they never wanted you to know. It's in the learning spirit of Yummy and the heart of Sister V on call in the learning. 
It's in the dreaming of magic into reality. On Restyle My Style and SMZ in the dreaming. Where learning meets dreaming. You'll awaken to the best you are. More thrillingly, the best you can become. Learn. Dream. Awaken with SABC Education. Enriching minds. Enriching lives. What are we going to do? Relax. Being HIV positive is not a death sentence. We start with taking ARVs. What about COVID-19? It's been six months since we got vaccinated. Now we're HIV. We're collecting our ARVs. We can also get our booster. Yeah, honey. Two stones with one bed. Two beds with one stone. But you've got this. Next. Hello, Ness. I'm here to collect my meds and to get a COVID-19 shot. Handling your HIV status? Now get vaccinated and handle COVID-19 too. It's safe to have with your ARVs. Call 0800-029-999 or visit findmyjab.co.za to find your nearest vaccination clinic. Get vaxxed today. You've got this. This message is brought to you by the National Department of Health and USAID. TS Galaxy and Stellenbosch FC have a real predicament. They both want a spot in the quarterfinals of the Nedbank Cup. However, they must face each other in the last 16. Who wants it most? The Rockets or Steadies? Be part of the last 16 Nedbank Cup action. TS Galaxy takes on Stellenbosch FC on Sunday, 12 March at 2.30 p.m. Live on SABC1 and SABC radio stations. Hashtag, we love it here. Brought to you by SABC Sport. For the love of the game. Yeah, we gon' get them. Get connected. Uh, WhatsApp the Metro FM studio. Yeah. 060-552-7303. Call. Call the Metro FM live studio. 0860-002-160. And of course, you can send us your WhatsApps on 060-552-7303. It's Throwback Thursday. We've told you some amazing stories here on Throwback Thursday. We told you the story of a, a young white girl who growing up didn't know the difference between herself and her black friends that she used to run with, except one thing. They all ran barefoot. She ran barefoot with them, and the next thing she was running barefoot uh, at the Olympics. South Africans loved her so much, they named her Zola Bud. We told you the story of the Mutsuening brothers who one day sat and decided, Hi man, let's enter the Comrades Marathon. And uh, halfway through, because we look so much alike, we're almost like twins, let's swap. And let's both run this race and see how well we're going to do. We've told some amazing stories, but it's always the stories with historical significance that I love. The stories that tell the time of our people from where we come from that I love. And today is no different because back in the day, 50s, 60s, all a South African could afford was a donkey. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to welcome a man born in the sprawling township of Alexandra 79 years ago, Mr. Inos Mafukate. He fell in love with horses when his family moved to Rivonia in the early 1950s, then a commercial farming area. But what that did for him and where it took him, that's a story about to get into. Dr. Inos. Hey, I'm greeting everyone. I never thought one day I could be with this kind of a radio, Metro, been listening and listening and look at it and I said, I'll never, same as you, Andil, I never thought one day I could speak with you, but the horse which are riding today, which is a Metro radio, today is the horse I'm riding. Thank you. Oh, but I'm going to well, it's well, it's well, like a whole, uh, as you know, we black people, how we are, we are very, number of us, we are very jealous. And the older people say, and if you can look at it, you can see what is happening, even today. Hmm. And it's an honor, not for us to be in your place, but for you to be here with us. That's the honor. We appreciate it because today, as a black person, I can ride a horse if I want, and many don't know that it's because of people like you that fought for that right, that fell off donkeys for us to be here. Talk to me about that. The first time you rode an animal was a donkey. Do you remember that? Do you remember the first time you got onto a donkey? <laughs> when was that? What do you remember? Well, it's the jokes today I can laugh, but on those days I was crying because donkey's name was Dapper. <laughs> Dapper. <laughs> Dapper. 
<laughs> and I used to go in the bushes where where Sun Hill Park today, where um, uh, Rivonia, Twelfth uh, Avenue. You could not cross one other side of the river. You would just finish up just by the river. It was the gravel on those days. Mm. And uh, the young boy would come. His name was John Walker. Come with a pony, and then he put me on a pony, and then I turn the pony with the with the reins. I don't know how to do it. And then his father comes and shouted to me. And when I get off from the pony to the donkey, I haven't got my reins. He doesn't give me that stick. The donkey runs with me right to the bushes. Wow, because <laughs> you were on a donkey, and this was a young yeah. man. Obviously, you know he was pure of heart, and he let you get onto his horse. And for the first time, you got onto horse, but that nearly got you arrested because the father said. Who are you as a black man to get onto my father's, to my son's, son's horse? Yes. And uh, that was a big thing. And when I get back home, they'll tell me I'm going to go in jail. And I'm still a little child. How old were you? I think that time I was about seven, eight around there. And uh, I'll feel I'm going to go in jail. I mustn't go in jail. And we as a children, we never saw what there was adults, both of them. I mean, my parents and his parents. Uh, what they were seeing, we did, never saw that. We were sharing us as a, as a children. And that's the thing made me to stand on a, on a gate, and when others come to Kilani, golf course and Kailami, they were getting about seven bob, and I was getting five penny, three penny. Running, doing the same work. Running on a path was a, a big riding school calling Blue Hill Riding School. Mm. Running on the path, I get there, they'll give me a piece of a cake, they'll give me three penny, and I go back and I go and show my mother. And then one day when I asked this horse who was black magic and I said, how can I touch him? They said, you can't touch him because you, the, you, the police will arrest you because you're not a groom. And as a child, I didn't know what the groom, the name of a groom and what it is. Then somebody told me, when you wake with the horses, you are a groom. And it's how made me where I start with the horses. But back then, all a black person was good for was a donkey. What's the difference in, in, in riding a donkey? How, how stubborn? Because I say donkeys are stubborn. When you were on a horse, when you went back onto a donkey, I can imagine money. Well, uh, donkey is a donkey. <laughs> donkey is a donkey. Dapper is dapper. He just... As I start riding him, sitting on his back, he, he knew I haven't got that stick. And he goes straight to the bushes under the bushes. And when I and fell off... you can't off, control him, you can't you, do anything. No, you can't do anything. And he knows already, I haven't, I haven't got that stick. And then the, this, his father is going to shout at me. And he's going to laugh on top of the horse. You know? And I'll start running now. So that's where <laughs> it all began. That was yes. his first taste of horses. But what that did for you is... It took you to a place where you were grooming. Next thing, you were on a horse. Next thing, we as South Africans can now today call you the first black show jumper because there weren't any. You got on a horse and you did what the white people did. You show jumped. You showed your talent. And that talent took you out of this country and got your name the king of the horses. Horsey Yadiper. We take a break. When we come back, we've covered where we began. Now the story gets interesting. Enos becomes king of the horses. We stay connected. Madness. No matter where you are or where we are. Metro. Metro FM. It's where you're at. Checker 6060 is working hard to help you save. Costs are rising, we'll do the driving. Let's go 6060. Deals and specials, save your petrol. Let's go 6060. No lights shining, repo rates climbing. Let's go 6060. All that's in store, delivered to your door. Let's go 6060. Save time, save money, save petrol. Download the 6060 app and let's go 6060. We're back at it. I'm told with every new year comes bigger challenges. But watch me take them on. I always rise to the occasion. Catch Skim Sum every Monday to Friday at half past six on SABC One. Brought to you by SABC Education. Enriching minds, enriching lives. 
is Sport Night Amplified with Andile. Okay. The Throwback Thursday with a difference. We'd love to hear which one was your favorite of the Throwback Thursdays that we did. This is Kulisa Makwalisa from Franz Rook. Andile, I'll be honest with you. Every Throwback Thursday has been an amazing journey for me. I feel like it would be unfair to pick one. But the one that touched my heart mm. is the one about Utabu Mgomini. The humbleness he showed mm. during the show touched me. He was mm. very respectful to everyone. He was saying booty to everyone, put in their bonga, put in their bonga. And that one, I think, stands out for me, and it's one of the closest to my heart. Sport Night Amplified, weekdays, 6 till 7 p.m. on Metro FM. Call. Call the Metro FM Live Studio. 0860-002-160. Yo, yo, we gon' get them. Get connected. Uh, WhatsApp the Metro FM Studio. Yeah. 060-552-7303. We're live streaming, of course, on Twitter as well as on the Facebook. Hey, if you are watching, you can see us and you can see uh, the dapper gentleman uh, that uh, sits across from me, Enos Mafukati. Tonight, we tell the story of a South African known as Horse Yadi Bere, translated, of course, meaning King of the Horses, the first black show jumper. And he also rode, of course, for the late Queen of England. That Enos Mafukati is with us. And uh, we're looking back to... Uh, a lot of moment, but remember when he became the first black to accompany the South African team of Olympics as an ambassador in Barcelona. A huge accomplishment. But before we get there, now you know that in order to get close to the horses, you have to be a groomer. For those that don't know who aren't, uh, 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 you know, affair with horses, what's a groomer? Well, uh, it's something when you look after the horses, they call you a groom. Like if you were waking in a girl, they were calling you a gardener. Mm. If you were working in the kitchen, you were a kitchen girl, you see? Okay. So when you say groom, and this, I queer about it because when I went overseas, there was no grooms because they're all white, you see? Mm. Yeah. But that means when you black you are in South Africa, you become as a groom. But they're also grooming in, in Europe, mm. you know? So when I came back, I said, we're very proud to be called black riders not calling the grooms. Because you can see when we start to compete in 1962, I started as a groom, and they made a groom competition, and then I won it. So what they did is, instead of saying you guys are show jumpers and riders, no. they said you guys are grooms. Yeah, so groom groomers. competition. You see? So is how everything started that way. 1962, I won my first Carno, And then my 1963, I won the second one. I was dressing nicely, riding a horse calling Amalaita. Then they never let us compete. You called your horse Amalaita? That, that was, his name, his name was Amalaita. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 1963 was the last time they would never la- allow us compete anywhere around South Africa. Mm. We're not allowed to compete any otherwise they burn that place. Till 1975, the well-known British a lady, which is Emily Drummond Hay, she mm. was married with er- er- Errol Vukafenik. She came to South Africa and said, why we don't allow blacks also doing show jumping? And only place they would la- allow us to do the show jumping was Marit's brother's school, which is St. Davis today. And people don't know. They think where the houses they are is where they allow us. No, I said, where the cricket pitch is, is a, I, even if where the picture showing me when I was winning a, a LRN championship, and we're only allowed to sponsor to, like LRNs, not any other company. So it was not very easy. And I started becoming as a member in 1977, and it was a fight. It was not easy to becoming as a member for the Transvaal Society. And I was good to compete in, in, in Kailani, where they know me as a groom, but if I must go in outside Free State or I must go outside somewhere, outside Transvaal, forget it, or on the side of Transvaal, it's no Joe forget it, they don't want to see me. But all of these years, you're not allowed to do this thing that you love. You fell in love with horses. At any point, do you think, I Ergilo Lala Bolo, um, let me go do something where black people are allowed to. You never gave up. Well, I have played soccer. I've had a, a junior, a Enos Junior Pirates in Kailami. He was, every time we was playing, was a, fu- a full house. Um, I, I remember one, it's 19, 1987, I became a goal scorer of the, of the season. 
for there, 19 goals. I was very good in nine. I was good in, in seven. I was good in six. Those are the, my places, all three, which I could play very good on them. And I, I was playing also with my, 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 my firstborn. <coughs> and I would play six for him. So I've been in, in those things, but I could not do the professional because as, as a child, if you are coming from Alexander Township and come to Soweto, they will kill you. And the parents will say, you're never going to go there. They wouldn't allow me to play soccer be coming in, in, in Soweto because those days was not like what is happening today. It was very, very, unless you got somebody which can help you closer than you are. But if you just think you're going to come in and play in Soweto, for the big sh soccer clubs, forget it. It was not easy. So I tried everything, but the horse became hmm. as a horse. Even today, my dream is a horse. Hmm. Yeah, the horse was calling Jamaican Ram, which is a full brother of Jamaican music. Uh, it's a gray horse. People say white horse. We went with the white horse, that's the gray, because the hoof will be. Uh, that's a horse carrying me from scratch to what I'm uh, showing classes is just like modeling for the horse and the rider. That's the thing which I have to do it. And uh, I was the reserve champion of the ranch show. I was the reserve champion of King George's Trophy at the Royal Trail Show, Peter Marisbeck. 127 years, they never allow blacks compete with white in, in the Royal Show. They reject my entries till the president, uh, 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 Crocodile, P. W. Porter. Mm. He he read the letter. Said he must write. They so reject. P. W. Porter. Yes. Said no. Let the man write. Yeah. They reject my entry form. Same is the overseer. They reject my entry form. So you can just see all that way is where they start calling me King of Horses. But I didn't like the name. I thought it was too big for me. Uh, and I didn't want to be called King of Horses. I was King Enos was okay because when the people I'm with them, I'm nothing on them. You see, I could not give a, a white lady a jacket on a grandstand. I will tell her, stop here. She must come and fetch it from there. I'm talking about Enelie Vukafeni, 1977, at the Royal Show. I could not go up on the grandstand. Everything was written on the door, say, ne swartni, ne so blankets. Although you need to be awarded and rewarded with what you've won, yeah. you can't go on the podium. No. A, a, a white boy came in Mary's back, find me wearing the red jacket. I was competing with the Springbok rider, Mickey Law. We won the competition. I thought he's coming to say, well done. He, asked, he came to me and said, where did, you, where did you get the red jacket? I said, I stole it. His answer could do it because he, he doesn't say, well done, after we won it. And think when you come in as a reserve champion of King George's Trophy, how big is that thing? So... I, don't forget to tell me, do you feel unseen as if everything that you went and did, everything that you spent your life doing, do you feel that you are seen now? Do you feel recognized? Do you feel like your life's worth and work has been seen? I think to answer that, I always put everything in front in God. I said, it's only God knows what it is. Because even what I'm doing today in Soweto, if the government can see it, he can help me. I mean, can you pay somebody a thousand rand a month? What you getting? Why, how you you traveling and everything like that? Those children in Soweto, we struggling going to the show. They will tell you a liar. They said they're helping us with what? If they give us eight thousand, they've give millions to us. So we struggling you've with got those horses children. now. You've got children that you're teaching yes. to ride. That is what I was showing a, a, a white man to say he must never undermine a black man. They never thought one day I will have a riding school. 1969, when we traveled to, to Venduk, when I was still Venduk, I told the other groom, said, I'm not going to go to heaven. I haven't got my own horse. They laugh at me. What's the funny thing what I'm talking about? Because you couldn't own your own horse. C couldn't, you know? So, but look at it. When I start with the SBCA in 1988, I start with one horse. We pay 700 rand. I, I learn 700 rand and the two children. And today, we're talking about what I'm doing there. If you come there on Saturday. How many horses now? Over 25. That's amazing. Mm. That's amazing. Speaking of amazing, talk to me about Barcelona. Well, this is, was the first time ever we blacks, not only me only, 
where we could share with Ilana Mayer was the first time we never share with any white person because we knew they didn't like us. But when we went to Barcelona, was no one was higher than other one. So we were there with Ilana Mayer. We were there with uh, uh, for, uh, Ian, uh, Ferreira. We when, were th mm. we were there with, but I had more publicity than any other one. I was the older one, yeah? and um, I'm telling you, this was just show you how the sports is. The sports has been a very good weapon for South Africa because it was 32 years South Africa was banned when we went to Barcelona, and I'm telling you that year was a difference. We I ne we never saw something like that. We were all in one place. All of us, black and white, who are treating the same. I thank people like Sam Rimsemi and the other committee because they picked me in Soweto. I never thought I would go there. When they were talking to me, my mouth went tight. I could not answer. When they say I'm going to go to Barcelona, I could never think I could go to Barcelona. Speaking of Sam Rimsemi, he heard that we were doing this show. He was a member of that team in 1992. Yes. And he said to us, guys, the person that you have there is one of the most groundbreaking people in sports that South Africans don't know about. This is what he had to say. Listen. Hi, you know, this is Sam Ramsami, your very, very old friend. I am so happy that you are being recognized and commemorated tonight because you had a very, very long road with lots and lots of difficulties but you continued and persevered in what you were doing. And I am so happy and I am so glad that everybody at last is recognizing what you've done. Your passion for horses went so far that you had all the refugee horses being looked after by you. You know, again, Sam Ramsani is so happy that you are being recognized. You look after yourself, you still have a long way to go, and we are so grateful, again, I repeat, that you are still alive and you are continuing and pursuing your passion, that is to look after the horses. Congratulations and thank you. Sure. I always said, to have a best honest friend is one in millions of people, is one. To have somebody like Sam Rimsami is not so easy because when he picked me up, when he picked me up, I never, 19, I was driving on the street and somebody stopped me and said, come, we're having the Soweto games. I didn't know what was that. And I thought I was only going for that. And he's where he saw me that day. And from that day till today, when he was getting his green jacket, they didn't even want me near where I, he must be, and he put me on a VIP. When he get his green jacket, I think it was 2013 or probably this, around there, you know. The same jacket, I got it, but he got it before me. But that man, he's a man, and I really thank him so much. I can hear the emotion, um, and I can see it in your eyes as well, because all these years, Datamafukate, people have written about you here and there, but you have not been celebrated in the way that you should have. One, because horses may be not something that's popular with black people, but what you did and what you have done to give your life up to say the horses are not just going to be for black people, for white people. It was a symbol that you were fighting. You were breaking barriers. Talk to me about how you got to be mentioned alongside the Queen of England. Because the day she passed, I heard you cried. Evening today, I'm on tears because if it was not the Queen, South Africa wouldn't be where it is today. Because when I went in Wembley, my first show ever, it was at Wales. Show jumping and showing, and I won it. And I was the reserve champion. Then I went to Wembley. And in Wembley, that's you no You went to Wembley? Yes. Wembley? Yes. In the UK? Yes. When I went to Wembley, I'm telling you, 
was the biggest thing because they reject my entry form and NHF have to fly and go into the queen and tell the queen and the queen said put him on a program because there's no substitute in Wembley only the champions compete if the horse or the rider comes out no substitute some other place you can substitute with the same grade but not in Wembley but I'm telling you I thanks the queen Elizabeth I said queen you have really made a lot she even saw me at Stonely Agri agriculture show in, in England when she compete she drive in I was on top of the horse I came second on that show and then she went away without when when we we'll talk later when, when 1982 we'll talk later right so Wembley was where I was breaking everything where if I say anything wrong in Wembley I wouldn't come when I come to the airport I'll be telling go back to Wembley because uh, they want to make me a party I said no make me a party when I come back I'll tell you what it is because I don't know who's going to give me something mm. who's going to do what and I'm not going there with a politician I'm a sportsman and when I went there to Wembley I'm telling you I went on my knees as a flight sit in Heathrow Airport, I went down on my knees and I say, thank you, Mudimu. Because I never thought one day, I remember when I was a child, I told my brother, I said, I dream going overseas. He said, I'm going to go mad. I'm never going to see overseas. And when that time came to Wembley, that was the biggest thing in my lifetime, which I'll never, ever going to forget it. And that was a, not only Wembley, Enelie, she won championships, Grand Prix, lot of things with me. And she said to me, that is your thank you. I want to make you thank you. You must compete in, in, in Wembley. Then I will be happy. She said, you can go to America. You can go to Germany. If you have done, not done it in England, you haven't done anything. The home of champions, Wembley. Yes. And I'm telling you, you see, here's a stadium on this side. Here's a horse indoor on this side is a tarot in between it and i'm telling you the older people came and asked me what oh, we've been told that black people they don't know how to ride i said they don't be giving a chance yeah they said and i quote from that weekend a bla they'd never seen a black man on a horse well everywhere where i was riding when you are showing a crowd for pirates and chiefs in F&B, 62,000. I was riding in, in a 62,000 crowd. Hmm. 62,000 crowd. And as I get off, people want to touch me. People want to hear the voice from me. I'm telling you, it's something you can never going to believe it. When I won the Midlands Championship this last year, that was the biggest thing where I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know how, who, how many people, they, they tried to touch me. I was sweating, dripping on sweating because... The owner of the horse, Vin Tulson, said, I want you to be people that never see a black a, a rider. You will follow me. Only in London, you find black people. But when you go to Wales, when you go to Melton Melbury, when you go into those outside far away, forget about it. I was only one. Only one. And I said, I'm fighting for South Africa. They asked me, what, what, what do you mean? I said, give South Africa a chance. You see a miracle. I said, if you are a South African champion, you can be the world champion. Today, look at it, what is happening. And who started that one? You find a white person come and tell a lie. I said, he started it. I started it. I was invited in, in 2011, the last meeting of the Olympics. I told the princess, and I said, I was there in 1982, and you never even knew, you never even look at me. I was walking behind you. She even didn't know the horse. I was talking about it. So you can just see outside. I, I was going to the black car. I had bodyguard. I, I was. Hey, man. I wear nama. I. On a little bodyguard. I wear nama. I. I'm not a joke. I'm telling you. Three bodyguards. When this one goes, this one comes. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm telling Looking you. Looking after you. I, I, I say to people when people see me, especially in Soweto, they don't know how much no, I've put know. in for our country, for our country, because I want to see the country do what it is today. Let's work together. Who, who's Debbie Coleman? Uh, 
Debbie Corman, she's a person helping we calling her Mabatu. Mm. She's a person helping me so much now today. Um, instead I must pay what other people pay for the horse feed, I'm paying less. I'm paying the cost what she buy on it. Not and uh, she doesn't make a profit with me. She has let me put have four stables. One is was my horse, which is calling Vuku Zenzele. Hmm. He died last year, October, on the twenty fourth. It's a heartbreaking. She paid hundred and fifty thousand for that horse. We take him to the hospital. He died. Even today, I'm struggling to go to the shows. We are the South African champion in a vaulty. You and Vuku Zenzele. Six. Six out of seven with the Soweto children. But what can we do today? We can't afford to buy that kind of a horse. He was a German one blood. He's not a thoroughbred. He's very big horse. He's full, give it. But it's a heartbreaking. This is what, um, when she heard that we're doing this show, Debbie Coleman says, please allow me to say something. This My is My dearest uh, Morena Wadiperi, translated as the king of the horses. And my goodness, how unbelievably true that is. It's Mabato here. I just wanted to tell you how much I've grown to love and respect you during the many years we've known each other. The way you've overcome all the challenges that life during the apartheid era caused you in your dream of riding horses. Not only risen, but become a star and a role model to the people of South Africa. You were certainly an apartheid buster long before many other people, especially when you rode in England for the late Queen Elizabeth and even had her daughter, Princess Anne, come all the way to South Africa to celebrate your greatness. I have been privileged to have stabled your wonderful horse, Booger, for four years. I know he was so much a part of the children's and our souls. May he rest in peace. Morena, you are a legend in your own lifetime. And I'm honored to call myself your friend. It's true. Yes. Thank you, Mama. Metro, ready, please. We need a help in Soweto. Not what people talking about it. People talk, say they're helping us one day. It does not. It's not as well. We don't need money, but we need a help. We need a help, big help, not little bit. If this could go with the government and they see what I'm doing in there, when they were opening the school, the school. Day in the mayor, no, the, the, the premier, Maf Makura, he was the first time he ride my horse in, in, in the school day on Wednesday. But honestly, nobody can see the, all these things, what I'm doing. Because apartheid was not fought only by politicians. There's many heroes of apartheid. Some going beyond these borders to defy do the modern day Django, a black man on a horse. I always say I was lucky I was not being killed because a lot of people have been killed because where I was going, I had, a, is a, 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 we went in Pretoria on, on, on Prince Law Museum, which I want to do something there. That I won the competition. The next day I found my horse box flat, flat, no wheels. So I've gone through two very bad things. Shortly, we went to Tabazimbi. They said, my name is not in the list. My name was in top in the list. There were three white people in the gate. They said, fast the bus, he's the bus, he brought nonsense to the country. Jady buses? Yeah. Not me. In Tabazimbi, in 2000 now, we're not talking about 90-something. So... Just see what is happening in South Africa. For Orange Free State, they only allow me to compete in 1981. I was already coming twice from overseas. But they, here? But here they said no. And who was the judge? Was uh, Mary Oppenheimer. And I won the class, and I, when I walked out, they wanted me to come to cocktail party. I didn't go. 
<laughs> but you know, uh, let's uh, let's pause at the end of the you know, and take a quick break. When we come back, I'd love to hear you uh, from you rather and take your voice notes. So it's uh, 060-552-7303. Call. Call the Metro FM live studio. 0860 Yo, yo, we gon' get them. Get connected. What's at the Metro FM studio? Yeah. 060-552-7303. Andile ma'a. Andile andile. A true pioneer you have there. You know, Andila wish South Africans could just recognize our greats who changed the historic landscape of this country. Maybe we could just have a show, a cultural show from music to sports. Your know, Mariam Makeva's, um, uh, uh, Hugh, Hugh Masekela, the gentleman in Evan's studio. You know, Andile, true pioneers. I appreciate your show. Much respected. Away. Evening, Miss Andile. Yes, Pershon Dusan from Duval. Yeah, what, what a legend you have in the studio is. He's, he's really, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I think he deserves a book like a father, like a son. King of the Oz and King of Kuwait. Big up your show. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, there for those voice notes. Keep them coming. And of course, uh, we'll play as many as we can on 60 7303 Your kids. How have your kids, uh, uh, do they know all of this? Do they see you as this king of the horses? Talk to me about your kids and growing up being this person that's fighting all of this yet raising uh, some kings and queens of your own. Well, I would only allow my children to go to hard PSDM to going to do their riding class, a riding pony, because if they ride the bus and misses his horse, I will lose the job. So what's a heartbreaking? I mean, where's the a, where's a pick and pay today in Sloan's? We were there in Goodman's. Goodman's was a polo there. Before the freeway comes through there, we were there. And uh, it was a struggling. And uh, I, I'm happy with the, uh, the grandchildren because uh, uh, AJ, the horses have helping him. What he is today, he's going to his father, to his music. Uh, Cabello is following me, he follow me. Katleho is with me. Tabang Karabo, the also the grand grandchild, which I'm calling Rose. We do male. That child, she knows I'm the first black show jumper. She knows everything for me, and she's only five years old. Hmm. Next time I'll come, she will be shy to talk, something like that, but she's got something special on her mind. So my children know. Karabo is the one that. Uh is most like the father. Like the grandfather. And the grandfather. Yes. Well, this is Gabelo. Gabelo. He, he said, hey, uh, Andile, please, man, can I say something to granddad? This is Gabelo. Amazing. As a trainer, as a grandfather, as a leader and a role model to my personal life, uh, it's been amazing. I mean, uh, she taught me how to stack your dreams. She taught me how to never give up. Uh, he basically was a father figure to me as I spent most of my time with him. And seeing him interact with the kids here and giving this all in this world of horses is truly amazing. I mean, for him, this this is a legacy he's leaving behind. No one or nothing can take that away from him. And it's up to me and the rest of the kids here to make sure that we carry on with this legacy, we live out his dreams and help the society in return. Hmm. Yeah. Andile. Because we need to celebrate and tell our own stories as, as black people and South Africans to say, Yes, you might not know about this, but don't turn a blind eye to it or a deaf ear to it because show jumping till today is seen as a non-black sport. Till today, we don't see black people did what you, doing what you did so many years ago and fought for, yet still, those barriers are still closed. Yeah, the only way you can do everything, you, you have to have a white a white lady or a white man to mm. be helping you otherwise by yourself that's why i decide to make this thing in soweto i decide to say i must give back to the children in soweto i mean 
I, I'm talking about thousands of hundreds of children that are coming and riding there. And not, I don't look for the money. I look to help them because I want to see my legacy. He must be running. What have we got in Soweto? No museum, no nothing. What we know about Chipa Muloi? What we know about those Scarasono? When, when we grown up, we saw Scarasono. We don't know nothing. We need to have our museum with black people. The proper museum, not the museum which is making like... Is not a, 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 a black a people. A museum of heroes. Yes. If people you, that made a difference from so it. If you look at on the book of genius, a genius book of records, my name is there. Very small like this. The first black show. In the Guinness book of world records? Yes. You are there. You find Mandela on this side, the old man Mandela, you find a picture and you find all the other story and then you find me on that side. A small piece like this. It's not exactly what, and they only put it that. I mean, we need to put, to show the world other, today. The world they must know to say it's not only the politician who fight for this world. With our brothers and sisters and cousins and everybody, play, people like myself, we have fight for it. If, I mean, Sun City, to do what it is today, they were showing me. Trans guy, they saw me. Cape Town, since young Jan van Riebeck came here. So, I mean, it's quite a lot which we need to show them. And I think we, we mustn't leave 1982. Please. Tell 1982 me. in Europe is special. <laughs> <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. And in 1982 in Europe, <laughs> a special time. That, so 1982 is, is, is for you the year that most signifies your career and your life? You know, I could not believe it. When I was a child, I saw Queen Elizabeth passing in, in South Africa going to, going to Rhodesia. Mm. I saw that picture and his sister and his father. And I never thought I would, I would see somebody like that. 1982, I went Great Norfolk Park, backyard, where Prince Charles he was playing a, 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 a polo there. And I'm standing with his father. He said, I'm Philip. I'm Enos. He said, there comes my wife. I'm not excited because I thought... Hold on, hold on. This is you speaking to Philip? Yes. He said, there comes my wife. I'm not excited. I want to see the queen. And the green car come driving. Queen was driving herself, mm. coming down to the clubhouse. When he stopped, because I was standing with him just near the clubhouse, and I find he's the queen. He said to the king, here is our visitor. So this is Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth. This is the What a What a gentleman. What a gentleman. I'm telling you, when, when, the, when Queen woke away, I said, why you don't tell me Charles' father? He said, I told him, Philip, I said, we never knew <laughs> Philip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? This was 1982. Wow. The Lady Diana. The Lady Diana. I will never want to forget. Diana. I will never want to forget that person. Tell me about her. She was there with Prince William. 1982, June, July, Prince William was a little baby like this. Because mm, he was born in 82. Yeah. And she was holding him like this and talking with us like, what? She, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you to say, Lady Diana, she's a person that pulled me. When she died also, I, I cry for it. But God in heaven, he made me 2019 to go and see where she died. I was just standing there and I find is where she died. See, it's a lot of things which South Africa needs to know about me. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things which I've gone through to them. So, 1982, when uh, Queen Elizabeth have drink the wine and everything, said, oh, your wine is better than South Africa. I'm not a wine drinker. <laughs> I'm telling you, I pour it in the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Truly speaking. Where are you? Are you? Were you guys at the palace? In the club, clubhouse. At the clubhouse. Yeah, just down. We there. always see the pictures of where they play the polo. <sighs> I'm telling you, God, you were horse, there. Horse have made miracles to me. That's why when I'm saying Jamaican rum is something, horse have made miracles to me. Horse have put me where I could not even get in. Oh, we've got somebody that's here, um, to me. We've got a visitor that's here that would uh, 
said, no, man, if we're going to do this, we can't do it and not have the person here. They want to be a part of this. So we said, you know what, it's fine. Come in and uh, let's have a, uh, uh, this person here with us so that they can be able to be a part of it. If you look behind you right now. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, the firstborn of my grandchildren. The firstborn, Katleho. When I start to see a grandchild, this was Katleho. Katleho, I don't know how much you know about your granddad's stories, but you know, I, I've always believed, like Winston Churchill said many, many years ago, history will remember me and be kind to me for I intend to write it. We want to write our own black stories. We want to write our own heroic stories. And Ba is here and we thought to ourselves, let's not wait till one day, 15, 20, 30 years, because I still see a long life here from today when we say, hey, let's gather people that can tell us his story. He must come and tell us his story. What do you want to say about your grandfather or to your grandfather? Well, firstly, I'd just like to say um, hello to everybody in the studio. Hello, Andy. Hey. And I'm very honored to be here with my grandfather, who's been a figure, a father figure to me mm. my entire life. I mean, I started riding horses at the age of 10, went on to compete provincially as a show jumper. I did some dressage as well. Um, and after that, I decided to join the foundation uh, while I was studying law in university. And it's pretty much been a struggle. You know, my grandfather sits here and he's emotional. I was in the back also crying because I realized a few years ago that this is a story that I have to tell. Hmm. So I've actually embarked on a journey um, together with fellows from the University of Johannesburg, fellows from, you know, Witwatersrand University too, to document his life. The first episode and what we actually want to do and what we would love to do is to write his biography and mm. that's going to be a combination of his words and my words we want to write it together amazing so that's what we're busy with it's a very vigorous process because there's so many elements that are factual so many elements that are and i know he doesn't like it when i say it, that are political but yes they are mm. and they need to be brought to ground um you broke barriers we need to unfold that as he mm. said it, step by step um, and the second part of it is to actually um, harness a team where we can come up with a documentary series. It's being written in bits and pieces, and we're hoping to you know, garner support through shows like yours, where we mention things like this to say, people, come, come and help us. If you're in, in PR, come and help us. If you're a writer, mm. come and help us. Come and have a look at what we have. Come and look at the archives we have, but we definitely do need help. And we want it to be something that's very organic because that's how my grandfather's approached a lot of things. Um, he's not somebody that goes out and tells you, you know, this is the Enos Mafagati Equestrian Foundation. This is where you find us. This is our website. And that's where I would like to come in and say, world, he's here. This is where we c you can find us. Well, tell everybody, where can they find you? <laughs> so you can find us on uh, www.sowetoequestriancenter.co.za. Um, the Enos Mafagati Equestrian Foundation phone number and office line is 010-065-4774. I'll repeat that. It's 010-065-4774. And if you'd like to email my grandfather or myself, please feel free to email enosmusutu44 at gmail.com or you can email cat at paintingwiththestars.org. Let's play one very quick voice note. Uh, Tammy is uh, ready to come on and take over. But uh, before I say goodbye, please have a listen. Yo, 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 yo. I, Andile. What a nice guest you're having. I've learned so much today. And I think heroes like him are not celebrated. And I'm so glad that today I get to know who he is. And I think that there's so much more that the country can do really to celebrate people like him. You can hear the emotions. And yeah, you know, heads off, heads off. Dr. Mafugat, in Dabai Pale, in Dabai Tlifutai Kraito. But I hope this is just a little bit that we've broken off of your amazing journey that 
we get to say thank you because yes it might not be political but it was politics that had us under a big size 10 brown shoe and you fought it and what you did spilled over into many other rooms that allow us today not ride a donkey but ride horses I appreciate you I think everybody which you are what I'm talking about it and uh, with the support there's quite a number of people that are supporting me and uh, I'll need more support I got also Jakey Peppers in Moy River she gave me about eight horses and not give me the old horses four years and five years old you know those horses they still got a lot of life mm. and Jakey Peppers thank you very very much for what she's doing I know Jakey Peppers when she was still a little girl and today she's a, gr a grandmother she's older now but she uh, helped me also so and other people the one I didn't mention them I know they mustn't be worried I thank everybody in the world oh. there it is ladies and gentlemen Horsey Eddie Bear. we thank you there's you. more to them I forgot to say name than what you thought you knew go look it up let's uh let's take this bible and let's tell the good story of South Africans who bravely put their lives out there to follow what they thought was just their dream but in case in fact they were doing it for all of us Inos Musoto Mafukate thank you Tati Thank, Thank you so much. All right, it's three after the hour seven. We've uh, eaten into her time, and I can see she's ready to talk to me on the other side there. Tammy? Well, first of all, how are you, Andile? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? You must be very good. And, um, you know, hello to all the guests as well that, that are in the studio. And a huge congratulations. It's the first time that I'm actually coming into studio to sit in for Ayabonga Gawe and seeing the new format of, of the oh, show. Oh, yes, yes. I am very... I'm not sure what's happened there, but uh, I can't hear Tammy anymore. So she's going to be with you uh, from 7 all the way till 9 o'clock from us here. We've got to get out of here. It's myself, Timothy. It's uh, Malcolm. And of course, Tabon Gwala. We will not tire of telling our own stories for myself and my entire team. Pella, pella. That's all me. <laughs>